The Acolyte's official description of Chimere makes Manny Jacinto's character sound like a fun rogue, the type of secondary figure we frequently meet in the galaxy far, far away. Lucasfilm calls him a former smuggler turned a traitor and supplier of unusual items, who has, quote, survived in some of the shadier starports around. He's also known as a shiftless drifter with seemingly no cares at all other than his own amusements. But his debut in Episode 2 of the new Disney Plus Star Wars series indicated there's much more to the insightful and cunning Chimere than he wants anyone to know. His dark side affiliations, unusual wisdom, and clear purpose suggest he's hiding the biggest secret in the High Republic. The Acolyte takes place during the High Republic, a time when the Jedi dominated the galaxy without any equals. As the series has shown, the Guardians of Peace also had outposts on every planet. Denizens of every world interacted with the highly esteemed Jedi. They also thought no one could realistically fight those powerful Force users. Bar customers left at May when she challenged Master Indara in the show's premiere. People of this era clearly had a personal awareness and intimacy within the Jedi Order, a century before Order 66. And yet, the ubiquitous of the Jedi does not fully explain Chimere's deep insights into them. He doesn't just know about them like most people. He's not intimidated or awed by them, either. Chimere has a meaningful understanding of who they are, what they want, and how they operate. He also sees they are vulnerable. Everyone has a weakness, he told May about the Jedi everyone else thinks unbeatable. She proved him correct twice when she killed two Jedi in two very different ways. The death of Master Torben especially showed the depth of Chimere's intuition about the Order and its members. He knew Torben's decade-long trance indicated the Jedi had not really found peace. Chimere somehow understood, even though the Jedi hadn't spoken to anyone in ten years, the past still haunted Torben enough he'd willingly atone with fatal poison. Chimere also apparently knows what planet the Wookiee Jedi Master Kalnaka is living on, something the Force-sensitive May didn't. He also managed to talk himself out of what seemed like an obvious and inevitable arrest by the Jedi. Chimere then skillfully eluded their detection when he helped smuggle May off the planet. And that followed, the supposed smuggler turned traitor without a care in the world physically overpowering May, a warrior who had just bested multiple Jedi. Indara didn't even consider May a real threat until she recognized May could use the Force. Yet somehow Chimere quickly fought back and overtook May when she surprisingly attacked him in the alley. Han Solo couldn't beat a Force user in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but this rogue can? And that's just one of the many intriguing questions the second episode of the Acolyte raised about Chimere. How does he know so much about the Jedi? including what they seek, the lies they tell themselves, where they live, and their own vulnerabilities. And how did he so quickly recognize Osha wasn't May? One possibility is that Chimere is Force-sensitive himself, and has received the same training May has from the mysterious master we saw at the end of episode 1. Chimere says he serves the masked figure with a red lightsaber, just seemingly in a different way than May. She's the warrior, he's simply an accomplice. But it's not as though a dark side devotee couldn't hide their identity from another Force user like May. Palpatine kept his secret identity secret from the entire Jedi Order while working closely with them. There is an obvious issue with that explanation, however. If the Masked Master is the very Sith who will revive the Dark Order, they would only have one apprentice. If Mei is the Master's acolyte, Chimere can't also be. But what if he is the Mysterious Master? Despite his official character description, Chimere obviously cares about something. He has a purpose. He's not just helping Mei kill Jedi. He wants to expose the lie the Order tells himself. That's the same purpose that Master has to kill the dream the Jedi live in. Chimere is also working with Mei, who knows almost nothing about him, just as though she doesn't even know her master's true identity. Yet Chimere is sharing seemingly unknowable knowledge about the Jedi with her, all while he can physically overmatch her. All of which points to the fact he's pretending to just be a normal servant to their mutual leader. Star Wars fans know a powerful Sith Lord can keep a secret identity from everyone. Chimere might be hiding his own as the master. If he is there, his story would be the kind of poetry George Lucas said derived at Star Wars. Chimere's own story would mirror that of Palpatine, whose own rise was made possible by a dark side user who took on the Jedi during the High Republic. What did you think of the first two episodes of The Acolyte? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to like the video and subscribe for coverage of the series as a new episode premieres every week. And remember to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Thank you all for watching, and remember, the Force will be with you. Always.